Dusseldorf grew out of small settlements on the edge of the Rhine back in the 7th century. From here, it's a 150-mile trip down the Rhine River to the North Sea and has been an important waterway since Roman times. Dusseldorf is at 51 degrees north, more than 500 miles north of Toronto, but enjoys a much more moderate climate. This is the Rhine River, and the Rhine is a big part of the reason Dusseldorf is here and why the boot boat show is at Dusseldorf, because boats can come up the Rhine and go right into the boat show, and that's how most of the big boats are brought to the show, coming uh, on barges or on their own keel right up the Rhine River. This tower dates from the 13th century when it was part of Dusseldorf City Castle, now a seafaring museum and cafe with excellent views. We spent our first day in Dusseldorf exploring the town and recovering from jet lag before planning our first day at the boat show over a dinner in the old town. This is pretty great. German nightlife, even though it's the middle of January and we're hundreds of miles north of Toronto, enjoy a beer outside or even dinner out here in the streets in Dusseldorf. Work night tonight in downtown Dusseldorf. Oh my god, it's huge. Oh wow. Super delicious. The Dusseldorf Boat Show calls itself simply Boat and is the world's biggest water sports trade fair. It is certainly the largest boat show we've ever seen. 250,000 visitors will attend Boat, which spreads over 16 huge halls in Dusseldorf's Meze Convention Center. It takes a while sometimes to get your bearings in this enormous show. We've got a map just to figure out which hall to go to. It's so huge. This is the sort of concourse between all of them and the mega map showing where everything is. We're looking for somewhere where apparently they've got diving where you learn to scuba dive in a pool. That's after seeing the surfing wave and the zillions of super yachts and everything else. This is also the most family friendly boat show we've ever seen. Kids can learn to sail, first getting a lesson on dry land, then getting in an opti dinghy to try it out. A new 200 foot long pool for surf training looks like fun and you can see if you like canoeing in an indoor river. You can even try scuba diving. Most impressive, you can try real surfing. Seriously, how do they pump this much water to make a real indoor wave? There are three halls just for sailboats and another two specializing in boat equipment where we get a look at a possible anchor for Distant Shores 3. Hmm. If you dream big, the Mega Yacht Building has yachts up to 120 feet long. For the sailor looking for a new boat, there are more sailboats in this one place than at any other boat show I've seen. But our real reason for coming is to see our new boat, Distant Shores 3. It was just finished in time to be trucked to the show, and this is our first look. Very excited, here is the new boat. We've been dying to show it to you. This is the Southerly 480 and we're on her in the stand at Dusseldorf Boat Show. So let's take a look around. We want to show you a first view. We've only just seen it ourselves. We're very excited, welcome aboard. Easy entrance through the companionway to a gorgeous galley right at the bottom of the companionway steps. This is a perfect galley position we've been hoping for. Really looks great. And then the raised saloon. The raised saloon. This table will drop down to become a double berth. 
This is uh, not finished yet. They just were rushing to get the boat to the show and we've been very excited to show it to you. So this is the first view of the new Southerly 480 by Discovery Yachts. And you can see the wood finish on here is just glorious. This needs another few coats of varnish. They were just again in a hurry to get to the show, but it really looks nice. The nav station has got views forward from the nav station here to the short settee that we can use as a sea berth and then up to the forward cabins. The bunk cabin with two bunks and then a deluxe guest cabin uh, with a big double. And the guest head with its own separate shower. So the aft cabin has also got, besides beautiful double and tons of storage for everybody, drive view windows for nice views out of the aft cabin. And then good ventilation from here, from underneath the table where there's four opening ports to get air in. Aft cabin heads, and then gorgeous shower for the aft cabin also. And then even a wet locker inside here so you can hang up foul weather gear and dry it out with a vent for the heater. So, if you're still watching at this point, I advise you to turn off the program or go and watch one of these other programs that we have here because now it gets very much more technical. I'm gonna poke into all of the lockers and if you're not interested in seeing that level of technical detail, tune out right now. Okay, so if you're still tuned in now, we're doing a more complete look over the boat. Starting at the stern, obviously we have twin rudders with this boat. Um, part of the goal of the southerly designs was to have the boat fairly shallow. So this is about the deepest part of the boat, just with one meter of draft. So you need to protect the propeller from that. This is a very gorgeous, very fold, four-bladed propeller. Really beautiful bit of engineering. And then the skeg and twin rudders, both not as deep as this. So this is the deepest part of the boat and the rudders are a little above that. So when you beach the boat, it doesn't matter. And then also this skeg let us put in a stern thruster. Uh, having two rudders, it's uh, nicer to be able to maneuver in close quarters when you have a stern thruster. The engineering on this thing is absolutely fabulous. You feel just how tight it is. If you hold one blade, the other blade doesn't move at all. They're geared together so they always deploy at the same time and uh, always exactly the same pitch. Really perfect. The 480 comes standard with a bow thruster. You can see they've done a nice job of fairing it in. This is something that isn't often done but because it's a standard feature they've done a fairings to reduce the uh, turbulence around the thruster when it's when you're sailing. The stern hatches aren't finished. This one isn't fitted properly. It's a temporary hatch that just came in time for the boat show. Uh, this is a gas locker and they've done two really big gas lockers so you can store gasoline as well as uh, cooking gas or propane cylinders in here. So they do a really good job of finishing and so if you reach up around the corners it's not got rough edges and they've done a great job of putting the gel coat around to smooth out the fiberglass, make it waterproof. It's the boat show. This is access to the largest hatch and also the largest locker and also the machinery. So since we're nerding out, let's go and take a look at that. So not everything's finished in here. We're going to have some more enclosures, some boxing in. Uh, but you can see, again, the kind of work that they've done even up in the, the areas where you don't normally touch. They've done a nice job of finishing it over. You can see the steering here has a, a the very, very solid heavy rudder posts. And then 
solid link steering so the whole thing has uh, no cables and chains and everything it's really solid and you can see the size of the bronze fittings that they're using for through hulls up at the bow again the hatches haven't been finally fitted and we've got these gorgeous stainless work you see that these guys do these are dolphin watching seats so in case you need to sit down to watch dolphins I've always been able to watch them in different positions but sitting down is more relaxed I suppose and then the sail locker is huge let's take a look in here there standing in the bottom of the sail locker forward of the sail locker is the anchor locker anchor and chain that will have a easier access catch so you can get in easily and take a look at the how the chains falling in the windlass and everything up on the foredeck we have the self tacking this is our inner jib really on the previous southerlies we've had this is a bulletproof sail that we've used in winds up to an over 40 knots in this case we've improved it by using the discovery rig that involves having uh, blocks that you can stop and make the car so if you wanted to just have it over to one side you can lock and make the uh, say for heaving two or uh, if you were sailing downwind and didn't want to jibe the sail unintentionally you could hold it over to one side one of the biggest improvements we were looking for with the new boat was to be able to have views forward so you could steer from the nav station so if it's a rainy cloudy day or a rough or just even on night watch you could take your cup of coffee and sit in the nav station and see with nice views forward for winches we've got these gorgeous Lumar these ones are electric and these ones are manual this is for the Genoa and we found that we didn't really need those electric as the sheet just comes down and back up to here so there's no friction loss and then uh, we have not found that it was difficult to put it in and then these ones are for the German main sheeting system which works on the main and then the self tacking jib also comes down to here so you have the two sheets and two winches to do the same thing so these are beautiful back in the cockpit we have an emergency hatch and overhead hatch over the aft cabin twin wheels twin compasses what's missing here is these uh, seats and lockers didn't get completely finished in time for the show so there should be teak on top of them and hatch lids to open their nice and deep decent size good for perfect for the cockpit and then the throttle control on on the port side and there should also be a keel control which hasn't been fitted yet either to raise and lower the keel and give you an indication of how high the keel is in the boat so this is a model of the keel showing the way the keel would be installed if you remember pictures from earlier so the keel sits in the yacht this way this part is about four tons of cast iron and then this is two tons 2.2 tons uh, the swinging part so this has all been installed in the hydraulics are in but there isn't the electric control yet to the helm of course the exciting technical highlight of this boat is its lifting keel the keel mechanism comes up underneath here and is hidden by this beautiful raised saloon which we like too so it's kind of a best of both worlds but I'm going to show you some of the inner workings of that here so as the keel top comes up in this area you can see the top part of where that is and uh, the keel pennant also uh, which runs down there and that would be the top lifting part of the keel you can access that when it's in the water this part is well above the water line so you can open that up and check that area and replace the pennant when you want and then all of the hydraulics the electric hydraulics the electric pack is there I'll show that in a minute at first this is the actual hydraulic ram that raises the keel up and then the pennant in gray there that comes in and lifts the keel through uh, that box there the keel plate is underneath that you can see the keel bolts and this boat has what has to be the largest most sturdy attachment of the keel 
of any boat because the keel plate itself is so wide and so long and it's bolted with so many heavy bolts all around this enormous pattern almost four meters four and a half meters long I think and uh, a meter wide electric pump for the hydraulic motor is here this is the area where you can have a washing machine installed if you like uh, we've got a couple of nice drawers here and then one of the electrical panels is here and the other one is down here let's take a look this amount of care taken to make these absolutely gorgeous fiddles is one of the hallmarks of the Discovery Manufacturing Group. Their woodworking team is incredible. This is a very beautifully designed solid oak fiddle, but just to prove how good they are with wood, they've inlaid it with uh, white maple, which is setting off this little white line around, and that goes through all of the fiddles. The galley has a ton of storage from these great bank of drawers here to under the sink up over the counter there's a number of uh, storage options and then right in the corner with a nifty glass drawer back down here for quite a large area un under the counter and an even bigger area under here for pots and pans under the corner. This is one of the rig supports holding up the main shrouds and it comes down to this mammoth link plate and down to the hull to be bonded in. One of the features I really like about the design is that you come down the companionway steps and you can step right into the shower with your wet foul weather gear. Take off your wet clothes and you can hang up the wet jackets and there's a heater vent in this hanging locker right in the shower so it keeps the salt water and dampness out of the boat. So the aft cabin has also got besides beautiful double and tons of storage for everybody we've also got access down here to the propeller shaft and the aqua drive and the back of the engine through here and uh, other accesses, large storage under the bunk here, as well as extra storage back under here. Well, we are on board the new Distant Shores 3 at the Dusseldorf Boat Show, and I'm getting a demonstration of this amazing new cooker that we have on board the boat. Uh, like yourselves, I did the ARC um, back in 2011. Um, I did it on a Discovery 55. Oh, very nice. And, uh, and the gentleman whose boat it was, he bought one of these cookers um, at the London Boat Show and then he said I now I need somebody who can who can cook um, he said do you fancy doing the ark and I said yeah why not so that was the beginning of a great friendship with him um, I, I'm still very very much in touch with him now and all the other crew members that did that journey with us and uh, yeah I, I cooked on uh, our cooker um, took us 17 days I promised them fresh food um, with every meal breakfast, lunch and dinner and, uh, and we had um, a champagne trip across the, uh, the Atlantic making meals our focal point because you know we didn't, uh, we didn't skimp on the food of the quality um, and the, the variety um, we had really lovely meals we had plenty of wine and uh, we made our, our trip across you know a, a real pleasure. Um, you've got a fast heating, thermostatically controlled oven, um, so you can cook anything from baking bread, making cakes, doing roasts, it'll brown all your chicken skins and your roast potatoes. You could even do a souffle if you wanted to, if you were having a dinner party on board. The insulation you'll notice is extremely uh, thick and substantial, which means that the economy of the cookers is uh, much, much greater than any other and that it retains the heat. Um, it's not drawing on the flame all the time, so it uses a lot less gas and in tests the bottles will last you nearly twice as long. Um, you get very even heat distribution, you don't get hot spots, um, so it's cooked at the front as evenly as at the back, which is why you can do things like souffles. So essentially it is uh, no compromise domestic capabilities. When it comes to the hob, 
it total again total flexibility if you want to clamp any pots and pans you've got very sturdy pan clamps which you can slide along or orientate however you wish to securely hold your pans when you want to clean the cooker all you need to do is undo this retaining bolt in the middle these pan supports will then just lift off and then these burners are designed to twist so that you can literally unlock them and lift the cap and the spreader off and you can clean your oven, your hob, even easily by doing that. Once you relocate it and you lock the cap in position, you'll have no rattling because it's all secure. Thanks to GNS Bass for the chance to test out their stove. But before we can cook anything on it, we'll have to wait another two months until we're back in England to pick up the new boat and begin our spring cruise on Distant Shores 3. In the meantime, you might check out one of our Bahamas movies to warm you up on a winter's night. Have questions? Ask away in the comments below, and please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. 